Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. We've all heard some crazy talk about cows posing a threat to life on Earth, like the idea that cow farts releasing methane gas could cause climate change, even faster than John Kerry's jet. Anyone with a bit of sense would agree that the notion of a creature that's been living in sync with nature for over 2 million years, suddenly wrecking the Earth in just 14 years if they're not wiped out, is just plain ridiculous. Yet, folks whose ability to think critically is fading, seem to buy into this claim. Maybe these are the same folks who are starting to believe that can give birth, and that someone can magically transform into something they're not, just by saying they are. But, those of us who can spot the craziness in these clearly wacky beliefs, can't help but notice that these ideas are being spread by globalist governments through a compliant media, and what's worse, some folks are actually buying into it. As a case in point, just recently, a publication called Natural News ran a story titled 13 Nations Agree to Engineer Global Famine by Destroying Agriculture, saying that producing food is bad for the planet. In that piece, they talk about a conference led by the U.S. climate Caesar, John Kerry, where representatives from 13 different countries supposedly agreed to reduce the global cow population as a way to combat climate change. Now, the conference did actually happen, and they did discuss the issue of methane emissions from cows. And yes, 13 participants did come to an agreement that some kind of action was necessary. However, it's important to clarify that not all 13 countries have passed laws to eliminate cows. It's worth stepping back a bit and digging into what really transpired. By doing so, we can not only figure out if red meat is truly on the chopping block worldwide, but we can also get a glimpse into how globalist governments aim to achieve their goals. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In most nations, the position of minister for the environment is often seen as a lower-ranking role, handed out as a gesture to a loyal party member. These ministers usually talk a big game, but rarely bring about significant changes. So, let's follow the trail of events that unfolded. John Kerry reaches out to environmental ministers in a bunch of lesser countries around the world, under the vague banner of making a difference. They're pretty thrilled to hop on board, as Kerry boosts their visibility and gives their otherwise somewhat useless jobs a touch of legitimacy. They all gather at a fancy four-star hotel for a few days for a conference. Everybody listens to the speakers getting all worked up about the threats of climate change, and each minister aims to snag a photo op with John Kerry. Kerry's keynote presentation is light on specifics, mostly just general remarks about the risks of methane, and the push for each country to commit to making a positive impact. When the conference wraps up, the attendees proudly put their names on a document that's more fluff than substance, but claims they're all on board with the goal of making a difference. A press release goes out, showing the ministers all together, stating that methane is a hazard, and that all the nations are on the same page about the idea of a global methane control strategy. The takeaway for the public is that all these experts seem to be in agreement about something, even if what that something is remains pretty fuzzy. A publication like Natural News runs a piece with a suitably attention-grabbing headline, the apparent exaggeration by natural news is seen as a pushback by authoritative sources like Wikipedia to warn the public. Interestingly, whenever Wikipedia discredits a publication, group or person, they always do it right at the start, like this. 
Natural News is a far-right conspiracy theorists and fake news website known for promoting alternative medicine, pseudoscience, disinformation, and far-right extremism. This is pretty much the process that globalists are consistently using these days. Wikipedia now sorts everyone, from publications to commentators, into either truth-tellers or those promoting far-right conspiracy theories. But let's get one thing straight. The real deal here isn't about cows passing gas any more than it's about whether <laughs> can give birth. Those are just distractions. So, if we step back and look at the big picture, why this approach is so widespread, and why they're sticking to it, we might come to the following conclusion. These issues are being taken to ridiculous extremes on purpose. The goal isn't to actually achieve these issues themselves. It's about reshaping the minds of the people. After a few years of having the public's attention focused on the divide between far-right extremism and whatever the Ministry of Truth approves, a substantial number of folks will have been transformed into thoughtless masses. Then, a bill can be introduced with a broad, intentionally vague goal to outlaw all forms of far-right extremism. To ensure the bill gets passed, a significant majority of folks need to be at a point in their new mindset where they not only see the law as justified, but also absolutely necessary. Those who still have the capacity for critical thinking will be expected to fall in line. The aim isn't to get rid of cows, it's to get rid of independent thinking and opposition. If we view the above as a process rather than a desired outcome, we'll be better equipped to zero in on the crucial matter at hand. Certainly, there are groups that want to replace red meat with insects as a food source. But that's not the main concern here. The ultimate goal is no small feat, it's about eradicating individual thought and dissent. This objective is vital for establishing a fully collectivist state, and it's the very heart of the broader globalist agenda. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.